today's video is going to be a little bit different. We are sitting, reflecting on the summer makeover. So we're gonna go a little bit more in depth into each piece of the process, tell you guys the things that worked out really well for us, the things that didn't work out so well, and also kind of talk about the budget a little bit and ways that you can kind of save or things that we did that helped us save a little bit on this project. So stay tuned, we're gonna get right into it. Let's talk a little bit about the painting of the cedar. We definitely learned some lessons along the way with this. This cedar is not sanded down. It's very porous. So we knew for sure that we were going to have to do some type of primer on it to prep it for the paint, make sure that it was kind of sealed. We did have some trip ups with what type of primer to use. I think ultimately we tried to avoid using oil-based primer and in the end, it was just the only thing that was going to get rid of the staining and just the only thing that was gonna work on a bare wood surface like this. Save yourself some time. If you've got wood that you're gonna be painting that's just like an unfinished rough wood, um, just use oil-based primer. If you've ever used oil-based paint before, you know that it's a mess, it's super sticky, it's really hard it's to clean. It's so hard to clean. You have to use mineral spirits to clean, and that stuff is super fumy. So is oil-based paint. The fumes from oil-based paint is super strong. We have a toddler, and we were kind of concerned about that, always concerned about that. It's a super tight space to be using that much oil-based anything in, mm -hmm. and so we were just trying to avoid it all together. So we started off using Kills 3, and it's a water-based primer. Mm -hmm. Well, when we had put it on, it was super yellow. It, it wasn't at first when we put it right. on, but it quickly turned yellow. In fact, I remember watching the footage back from the first video in this series, and even, you know, only maybe like 15 minutes had passed, and you could see just right before your eyes that it was, the stains were soaking through and the color was turning yellow. We just knew that it, I mean, we stopped about halfway through and decided like, there's no point in wasting the time. We just need to move on, do what we gotta do and get this thing done. Yeah, there were some spots that had some water staining from a while ago and there's no more leaking in this room anymore but that water staining was showing through so prominent through that water-based primer, mm -hmm. and that just wasn't gonna fly, so we had to do oil-based. Yep. One of the other things that we did was we used a paint sprayer for the first time. We purchased the Graco True Coat 360 DS, and ultimately, like, I really liked it. I mean, I think it was a pretty budget-friendly version yes. of a sprayer. I think it was around $200, which, you know, isn't like the cheapest, but it was definitely an investment. We have lots of projects that we knew we needed a paint sprayer for, so it was really just an, an investment overall and not really just for this room. And compared to a lot of other paint sprayers, it, it's a really budget-friendly option. Yeah, it's a really nice paint sprayer. It mm -hmm. does a great job. Um, I was super impressed with it the first time I got to use it. I know Krista was super excited about yes. it. Um, so. Anytime you're going to be using a spray gun to paint um, and you have as many windows as we have, we knew that there was going to be a lot of prep work, but we knew it'd be worth it. So the floors had carpet on it. We knew we were going to get rid of that carpet, so we didn't put any drop cloth down, but we had to tape up every single window. Yeah, and about the windows, we actually decided to go ahead and spray those as well. So when we taped up the windows, we left out the edges of the storm windows so that we could actually spray those also. Yeah, we literally just taped the glass and everything mm -hmm. else we left open. I knew I'd have to go back in with a razor blade and, and unseal them because they were sealed shut. Yeah. And I've done that since and they do all open. So um, it is, but it looks so much better. I oh my think. gosh, yeah. that alone, I feel like just made it look so much nicer than it did before. Mm -hmm. So we used an exterior paint from Sherwin-Williams. So I wanted to make sure we had something that really soaked in and, and would be sturdy too. It does get hot in here. We have a mini split air, um, little heating and air conditioner unit, but in this room, it's still, if that's not running, it can get up to 85, 90 degrees in the summertime and it can get down into the 30s, 40s in the wintertime. So just having that extreme kind of weather shifting throughout the year, we wanted to make sure that we had something sturdy that would last us. Okay guys, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about the ceiling. And really the ceiling was in pretty good shape. It was, I believe, some type of panels. Yeah, about four feet by eight feet of plywood. 
panel uh, of sorts. Very, very thin. Mm -hmm. Um, but actually it was in really good shape. So the only thing is there were seams that you could see in between. We even tried to just caulk it and see if we could make them disappear that way. And it just wasn't really an effective method. So we decided to get some MDF trim and cover the seams that way. Um, and it actually kind of just gave the ceiling a little bit more interest. And we weren't really trying to do anything fancy. It doesn't have an exact like perfect design to it, but um, ultimately it just kind of hid away the seams and I actually think it turned out really well. Yeah. So let's move on to the flooring portion of the project and kind of how we went about that. There was a few things that we had considered when talking about the floor here. We have a pool so we knew that people would be coming in from the pool so and it's a sunroom it's going to get dirty it's going to get muddy I just wanted to make sure that it was safe and also cost effective. Um, we decided to just go with concrete and and we knew that there was concrete underneath it, underneath the carpet. So we decided, hey, let's just see how that looks and maybe try to finish that. That carpet itself wasn't glued down, but some carpet at some point before that had been glued down and there was just tons of adhesive all over. So I knew that there were two options here. We could try to get all the adhesive off, but you can get like an angle grinder, like a diamond cutter, mm -hmm. essentially, and grind your concrete down to a smooth finish, creating- That sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, and really creating nasty. a ton of dust. And I was like, after painting all these walls white, there was no way we were going to get them Backtrack. completely covered and dust. And we decided to go with Ardex feather finish look to it. We had done this previously on our countertops at the old house just to kind of give it a smoother finish on top of the concrete. And we thought, hey, this would probably be a cost effective way to do it and make, make it just look super clean and still give it that concrete look we were going for. Yeah, one of the things that I think we liked about it, not only was it budget friendly, but um, it is kind of naturally supposed to be imperfect and have a lot of texture to it and a lot of movement to it. So it felt like it was going to be something that would be kind of difficult to mess up. I mean, but let's, let's talk for a second about how there's always that like, oh shit moment in any yeah. renovation. Yeah. And we definitely have that with this one. We have it with every single one where you like get into it and all of a sudden you're like, what have I done? The floors were that moment for us because it was a lot of work and it's very difficult to get it perfect. And really until we did the very last step of doing the like floor polish on it, it didn't look great. It tells you on the box how exactly how to mix it and it says if you don't mix it this way it's probably not going to be worth anything. Well it tells you to mix it like a peanut butter consistency and when I went to go apply it it was drying as soon as it I was just... putting it down it was drying in the bucket before I could get it done. It was so hard for me to spread it looked terrible as I was spreading it. Yeah it just wouldn't go very far yeah. and I think it's really hard to mix that consistency down to where you have like a smooth consistency. It still had I feel like it still had like some grit to it maybe which yeah. was making it really hard to spread and really hard to get a smooth finish. So ultimately we were using it for a different purpose than it was really intended for right. and we had to just go way thinner on it. Right. I think it worked out okay. So I mixed it down to more of like a cake batter type consistency where it was easy to spread. It was almost liquidy so I could kind of move it around and it wouldn't dry too quickly as well. Uh, once I got about halfway through the room, I really hit a stride with it and it started to look really good and started to smooth out really well. So we sanded it down. I think we were pretty optimistic that he had found a flow at one point and so we we're like, okay, the second coat's going to go on really well. It's going to look really good in the end. But what ended up happening is when you layer this stuff, and I don't know why, if it's like the way that it dries or what, but there were a lot of dark spots mm -hmm. um, that we didn't have on the first coat. So. Um, really, and there still are a lot of spots that have a much darker tone to them. Um, and it felt like every time we went to go patch something, it would make it kind of more obvious because it never would dry back down to that light color. Thankfully, in the area that looked the worst, we have an area rug that was the plan the entire time. So we kind of knew as we were going, we're like, this doesn't look good, but also we're gonna cover it. So yeah. I'm not gonna stress too much it's about just, it. It was always our tester area. That's why I started over here. Glad I yeah. did because 
Um, it, it still doesn't look as good as the rest of the room, right? But there is also a giant crack that goes halfway through the room that we had to yes. fill as well. That is kind of uneven, so it kind of threw another loop into everything we had to do. Yeah, and it wasn't. It's not just a crack. It's literally where there's two different slabs and where they meet. Right. Trying to blend the two slabs where concrete had broken up and we had kind of this really deep crevice. That was really hard. We. It definitely doesn't look perfect, but I, you know, it is what it is. And would you do this again? Yes, I, th I think I would. I, I know what I'm doing a little better now. The only thing that <laughs> turned out to be a little different than I thought, it ended up being more expensive than we thought. Yes. Just because I needed so much feather finish. I think all in all, I ended up using about eight boxes of feather finish. We had originally bought four. four. <laughs> And yeah, then, we totally wasted one box though, because that first box oh, that we did when the consistency was off was a waste of a box. Right, and then, but actually we ended up using nine. My so, suggestion <laughs> would be, if you're gonna do something like this, buy way more than you need, yep. and then you can just take back what you don't use, but definitely have it on hand because it's a lot harder to blend those edges together if the concrete starts to dry, and then you're putting like brand new wet over the dry, it just, it just doesn't work, right. so. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the design of the room a little bit. We ended up going for a vintage cottage core feel in here, very whimsy. As far as everything went, we, we tried to keep everything pretty budget friendly. We already had the dining table. Um, that was actually something that Luke and my stepdad made for our wedding. So we knew we didn't want to get rid of it. We got a different dining room table though for inside the house and we just knew it was gonna be perfect in here. It's very slender and long, so it's just great for a space like this. Um, it has kind of industrial legs on it and so we knew that that was gonna fit really well in here. We wanted to have conversation seating in this area and we found these at Home Depot. They were, I think Stylewell was the brand. Um, they're a little bit darker than I would have liked them to be. I wish that we would have gone with something that looked a little bit more of like a natural wicker, but they were very affordable. So, um, yeah, and I think they're pretty comfy. I would maybe get some thicker cushions. Yeah, some thicker cushions. Or just like have more pillows or something, but we are working on all of that still. Mm -hmm. They didn't come pre-assembled. I will say if you do oh, buy these, you need yeah. to make sure that you have on your He-Man outfit that day because <laughs> Just the little button or the little screw cover thing. Oh my gosh! It takes all of your might to put them on. Uh, so it was it wasn't the easiest thing to put together, but we got it done, and it and was it was worth it, was. it for the price too. So oh, totally, you know. yeah. I'll put something together if it's going to save me some money. Yeah, and then the chairs around the dining table. Those were a whole thing, and to spare you too much of the details. These chairs are super affordable, very stylish. They were also Stylewell brand from Home Depot. I will link them, but if it's something you're interested in, just know they're very hard to get a hold of. Everybody likes them, apparently. They had great reviews, and the best part about them was not only were they stylish, but they were $40 a chair, which is just, I mean, I looked and looked and looked because I was ready to give up on these chairs at one point, and I couldn't find anything that was comparable as far as like, aesthetic and price, price go price. so not only that but on top of that they are super comfortable they're very comfortable yeah. and they're very spacious and then the only other thing is i tried to thrift a lot of the decor for in here i thrifted some frames i didn't pay attention necessarily to specific sizes but i just went to try to find any like gilded gold frames that I could at thrift stores and then just pull the art out and I had gone on Etsy and ordered some digital downloads that I had printed. I'm going to link all of that information below so if you're interested in the prints, all of that, I will put that in there. Obviously I can't link any thrifted frames but they are so easy to come by if you are looking for kind of a similar style. Just take the idea of what's in the frame out of your mind and just look solely at the frame and know that you can replace it. One of the things that I love about Etsy digital downloads is that when you purchase them, they will send you multiple sizes. So usually like five or six of standard sizes so that you can fit whatever print you want into whichever frame. Um, but you're also dealing with a small business and um, 
you know, you're going to get a little bit more personal care that way. You're supporting their business, obviously, which is always good. Um, but it's also a little bit more customizable. I had one frame that I thrifted that I wanted to use for a specific print and it wasn't a standard size and I was able to just message the seller and she, no questions asked, just sent me the file for the right size that would fit in my frame, which was awesome. I highly recommend this Etsy shop. So um, it's North Prints. I'm gonna link that again, like I said, down below. Check them out. They have gallery wall sets, which is what I purchased. So you don't have to actually pick out four or five different prints to go together. You can just purchase kind of like a pre-made one, which is kind of nice, takes the guesswork out of it. So the company that I use to print the digital downloads is called Finer Works. They are based out of Texas. And I have used them for multiple things now. They always do a really, really nice job. I ended up going with Chicle paper, which I had never done before, but it is great for high quality art prints. That's what I love about Finer Works is that they offer great papers for like artwork. Whereas a lot of print shops are more directed at photographers. So you're gonna have that like shiny finish, you know, and you can get great quality prints, but really when you're looking at something that is made for artwork, it's going to turn out better. And they truly look like oil paintings. Yeah, like the texture you is would think beautiful. That they were. Yeah, you wouldn't know that they weren't actually oil paintings. Yeah. Um, even if you're looking up close, they there's texture to to in depth in the pictures. It's so great. They super high quality. I yeah. definitely would recommend. Um, and it was relatively affordable for those as well. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was, I think, around $100 total for the whole gallery wall, but that includes the frames, the printing, all of that stuff. To purchase the digital downloads for that gallery wall, and as I said, it came with five to six different sizes per print, uh, it was like $11. So, I mean, you just can't beat that. And then if you wanted to go with a more budget-friendly or more affordable paper, you could do that. Um, the Jaclay paper just in my opinion, was worth spending a little bit extra on. We definitely wanted to have lots of twinkly lights in here just to give it that, that like mood. The ambiance. The ambiance, yes, that's exactly it. But when we plugged them all in, we did two, I think we did like 100 feet total, right? Yeah, two 50 foot strands. Mm -hmm. And when we plugged it in, it was so bright in here, like looked like daytime at nighttime in here, and that wasn't really feeding into that ambiance that we wanted, so. We actually found a dimmer on Amazon. It just stopped working, so we're gonna send that one back. Um, but they do make several different products like that. We're gonna try a little bit higher end one. We did go with like the cheaper one. It was, I think, only like $12 or something. So yeah. we're gonna probably send that one back and try something else. Yeah, there's one that's like about $35 that has some features where you can like control it from an app that connects to your Wi-Fi, things like that. Might be a little nicer to just be able to do all that from our phones anyway, and maybe even turn it off when we don't wanna use it and not have to unplug it to do that, so. Yeah, and it's just nice that you have the option with string lights that these aren't necessarily dimmable string lights, right. but these devices you just hook them to it and you can then have just a range of dimming for any yeah, incandescent lights. Exactly. So, yeah. so as far as window treatments go in here, we wanted to keep the cost way down. So I ordered just some sheer curtains. I, sheer is always the way to go if you want inexpensive curtains. You can get a set of two panels was $15. So for curtains, that is so cheap. And I think they're 96 inches long. So great deal if you want inexpensive curtains and you have an area where you can use sheer curtains that that's the way to go then we did the pvc pipe curtain rods so we basically just got pvc pipe spray painted it black got some curtain rod hooks off of amazon now you can make these with things from the hardware store, but honestly, for us, we were just like, we have enough DIYs in one one area here. Yeah, so. we're, and really, they're not that expensive. They're not that expensive. It's totally worth it just to buy it. Just make sure that the hook opening will fit the size PVC yeah. pipes that you're putting in there. Otherwise, you could run into some issues, but. Yeah, um, and some people use conduit instead of um, PVC pipes, so. There's other options if you want to do it that way. I think conduit's probably a little sturdier. Um, yeah. If you're gonna have heavier curtains, that For might sure. be the way to go. Yeah, and then um, garage sales to get books. And um, yeah, I most of it was all just like thrifted or stuff we already had. Okay, so now we're just gonna kind of sum up 
our favorite things, what we would have maybe done differently, and just kind of overall thoughts on this as we close this video out. So what is your favorite thing about the room? My favorite thing is this vaulted area in here. Yeah. And we've got the way we've got the twinkle lights hanging. Um, when you're in this room at nighttime, it's just so, it's so movie-like. It's like, you feel like you're in like a romantic comedy from back in like the early 2000s. Matthew McConaughey is going to walk what? in and, and woo you over. Oh, man. Now it's just so, it's really magical and just has such a great vibe. Um, and just sitting in here so relaxing. It's just beautiful. I love it. I don't think there, I've ever had a room in my own house where I've just thought, oh my God, this room is so nice. Yeah, it feels almost like, you know, when you go on vacation and they always have these like really pretty outdoor areas for you to relax in and you're like, gosh, this is so nice. Yeah. Like we wanted to recreate that and kind of feel like we had a place to vacation to in our own home. So um, yes, feels very magical, kind of feels like, you know, a little like female hobbit hole, if you will. Yeah. I don't know. Do yeah. they call it a hole? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's just got a very like whimsy feel to it. It's very cozy. Yeah. I think my favorite part is really just the way the design all came together because it was different from what I typically do and um, I feel like I was really able to make that vision come to life and yeah, I'm just super, yeah, super happy with it. When you were telling me all about it and I can picture it in my head, but once you've finished it, I think it even looks better than the magic that I was imagining and picturing yeah. in my head. I can't believe how great it looks. Mm -hmm. I'm super happy with it. Yeah, me too. What would we would have done differently? Um, hmm. For me, I definitely would have started with oil-based primer. I think yeah. that that was a terrible way to start. The, it wasted a weekend. Yeah, it wasted a weekend. It was just a terrible way to start a project. You never really want to start your project off on a really bad note, and it totally did. Yeah. It was super discouraging. Was very frustrating. Wasted a lot of money in primer, probably about $100 in primer. Yeah, I don't know that there's anything that I would have necessarily done differently. Maybe trusting the process a little bit more along the way. Um, I definitely had some of those moments where I was just thinking, this is a disaster. It is not going well. It's not going to work. And that happens in almost every project. So I just need to remember throughout these projects that you just got to trust the process. You always figure it out. Anytime you're DIYing and you're inexperienced in something, you're going to hit roadblocks and it's okay. That's a wrap on this project yep. and we hope that you guys enjoyed following along. If you're new and you miss watching the process, I have a playlist that I'll make sure to link below and all of the videos that go along with it so you can easily look through them. If you enjoyed following along on this journey, as we've said, we have a million other projects to do. So make sure that you subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Yep. Bye. Bye.